guys, I'm Sean from Bluehub and today I wanted to make a quick video um, or an all-encompassing video in fact on Shopify, how to set it up, um, what the settings change and how it's going to work within Deer. So firstly here I've got an, a fresh instance of Deer up um, where I'm going to be adding the integration into this instance so you can follow along with me. First step here is going to be going into the integrations tab where we'll find any integrations we do want to add into Deer including the native Shopify integration. From here, you can then search for Shopify to find the Shopify specific integration. You can then click into that like so. And we'll be given the Shopify integrations page. From here, we can then select the plus button in the top left where we can then add a new instance of Shopify to our Dare account. We can press the connect to Shopify button here, which is then going to load um, Shopify and providing you're logged in will ask you to connect your store. For my instance, I'm just going to be connecting our test account here. And we'll see that if, providing you have the correct permissions, you'll then be loaded into the actual integration page and have the ability to install the app into your Shopify. <laughs> something shouldn't have gone wrong, but something may have gone wrong because I, this was previously connected to our account. Um, and I disconnected it to then reconnect it. Took me two seconds to fix that. Okay, after it timed out, it then decided it would then go through. Um, once again, that shouldn't be an issue for you. That was just because we've had this uh, previously and I'm then removing it and re-adding it. But once you've pressed that approve, you should then get the following screen. They should link together nicely. And then down below here, you should get a date of the connection being initiated. From there, you'll be then loaded onto the settings. So you can see here that we have the setup option and we'll have all of our different settings for this portal. So within here, I'm just going to highlight some of the more important features, um, and then we'll move on to actually creating an order within Shopify and how that is then pulled through to Deer. So firstly, when our order is actually captured, so this is when it pulls over into Deer, we can either do it when the order is created, so as soon as the order is made, when the order has a payment against it, or when it's been fulfilled. So if you're using any kind of third-party fulfillment system or 3PL, you would want to use the fulfilled option here because that's then going to then allow them to fulfill it and you can still get all of your um, invoices and things like that coming to Deer, which is then going to go into your zero and do all of your um, your accounts. If your direct, your free PL was connect, uh, directly connected with zero, you wouldn't want to do that. In the case that they aren't, you, you can do it that way. If you don't have any kind of free PL, um, the usual case here is that we collect the orders into Deer to be fulfilled once they've been paid for, because payment is usually up front on any Shopify orders. Um, and then we finally have the option for when the orders are created. Um, usually the payment is as soon as the order is created within Shopify. So I'm not really sure why anyone would use that. Um, but if you have any ideas, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, for now, I'm going to set this to paid. Next here, we have our consolidation orders. So this is if we just want to see all of our orders or our Shopify order for the day in there in one single invoice with all of the items on it. Um, so that we, just re we can just reconcile against the Shopify bank account, against the entire invoice. We have the option here to consolidate all of that information into Deer. Um, once again, this works more if you have a free PL who's doing the fulfillment for you, because if you consolidate your orders into Deer like this, you're not going to get the shipping information pulled through. So this only really works if you have that free PL. If you don't, you're going to want to use no consolidation, and that means that all com uh, customer contacts are going to pull through. Um, which means their contact address and any kind of information like that. Um, that just allows you to do the shipping and the billing addresses for that customer. Next, we can select a default customer, but if there is no customer selected, um, so in the instance there is no customer, all the customers are consolidated. Um, in this case, we usually recommend just making a, a customer called Shopify customer or cash customer. Um, I would typically say that you should use Shopify customer for this, so I'll quickly go and make one of those now, and then I'll put that in there for us. There we go, now we have that in there. Next is the sales price tier for any customers who don't have an account. And once again, you can just set that to anything since realistically this isn't going to be used unless consolidated accounts is turned on, but it is a required field. Um, next we have our comparative price within Shopify. Um, so this is if we're listing any products. This is the price tier to be used to compare in Shopify, so um, the regular retail price that some people like to list. Um, and for this, you just select a price tier for what you want to be displayed next to the price tier the customer is actually paying or the price they are paying. Once again, that's more for if you're listing products to Shopify and you want to customize what goes uh, on the upload. 
On the right here, we then have um, process auto assemblies. So this is important for um, any kind of uh, packaged or um, sets of goods that you might sell. And on here, you have two options. Um, so we can either assemble all of the items for the entire order or just assemble what's remaining if we already have some assembled in stock. So it's not a massive rule, but it just means the difference between if you are trying to save up some assembled stock on uh, a shelf, this is going to pull from it unless you dictate otherwise by saying for ordered quantity only. Next we have pick, pack and shipping. Um, so obviously orders coming from um, Shopify um, can automatically be picked, packed and shipped depending on what state you want them to come into Shopify as. If you don't really use the picking st stage much, you might want to skip the pick stage. If you don't want to use the picking or packing, you can then just skip them both and go straight into the shipping stage and use uh, Shopify for your fulfillment. This is just skipping the internal stages of beer, um, so you can use that to however you want. If we pick no picking here, we're just going to get an authorized sales order come through, um, and if we have the payment against it, an authorized invoice that hasn't been uh, had any fulfillment stages complete, which is where we usually like to do it, unless the uh, third party is fulfilling it, in which case we'd skip this and go straight to the pack and ship, or we'd use the fulfilled option here. From there, we can then come below, um, where we have a couple of additional options here. So we can set our invoice status here, so we can have them come through as authorized or draft. Um, that's pretty important, so if there's a payment against it and we have it come through as authorized, that payment's then gonna go straight into zero on the next sync or we can have to approve it first by making it draft. We can update our stock levels in Shopify based on our stock levels in beer here, providing the SKUs are mapped correctly. Um, we can list products as draft here, so this means if we do list a product, there's an additional from uh, list a product from deer, there's an additional um, approval process that you'll need to do in Shopify before it's actually um, fully uploaded. Here we can allow users to purchase out of stock items, which is allow, going to allow you to put, uh, users to create back orders in beer from Shopify, um, which you'll then have to obviously purchase the stock for to fulfill. Um, this is allowing you uh, deer to create products. If the names, um, if there are two products with the same name in deer, this is just gonna create a new product in Shopify for the second product. Below here, we have the master data source. This is quite an important one. So here we can select what we want data from, to be pushed from Deer to Shopify, data to be pushed from Shopify to Deer, or all products that use the original source system data that, um, from where they came from. So this means if you download some products from Shopify, but you upload some from Deer, those products are always going to have the relevant data from the platform they originated on. So we usually we do say to st stick to source system, but if in the future you want to use Sin7 Core as your core base for your all products, you can switch to the Sin7 Core option, Alternatively, if um, you have a lot of marketing information coming from Shopify and there's uh, lots of updates going on there and not in Sin7, you can pull data from Shopify. Next, we have the default location for the sales. So this is just allowing you to select a warehouse for the Shopify instance. So if we wanted to sp uh, specify a particular warehouse here, we could. If we just use default location, um, if a product has a default location against it, it's going to divert to that warehouse. So if I said um, product one, has a default location of CF, and product two has a default location of crafting bench, um, it's gonna default to the correct way warehouse depending on which product you buy. If you buy both products in one order, it's only going to go to one warehouse and you'll have to split that order out then manually. So if you have um, different products from different warehouses, if they're ever being purchased together, that could cause issues. Next, we can do a revenue account for our Shopify sales to split the sales um, in zero out into a different uh, account code. And this can just be useful for reporting on uh, where uh, sales are coming from. Similarly, we have the sales representative field where we can do the same within Deer. Um, so we can add a sales rep within Deer called Shopify, which is usually what we would recommend you do here. And that'll just allow you to limit your reports on Deer to only show Shopify orders. Here we have auto retry sale or uh, sync. That's pretty self-explanatory. If it fails, it's gonna try to sync the order over again. Um, to try and make it succeed the second time. And here we have the option to import uh, Shopify sales order tags. Um, and here we can do that by customer type or account ID. Down below here, um, we have our tax rule mapping. So any tax rules currently set up within Shopify, we can map to our tax rules within Deer and vice versa. And then we have our account mappings for any payments um, within um, Shopify. 
if you have things like PayPal and Stripe integrated with your Shopify, they will come through as payment processes here, and you'll be expected to provide a bank account code from zero. Um, and here we have locations. So if you have locations set up in Shopify and you need to map them to specific locations in here because you don't want to do default locations, you can do that by selecting the locations drop down here. And then mapping one location to another. That's it in terms of the general settings. Uh, the next page would be the catalog and the bulk listing. Now these pages are pretty similar. They do the same thing, but in different ways. But the catalog is gonna give you a list of all current items that you have within Deer and give you the option to then list them on your Shopify so you can upload them. Alternatively, you can do this the other way around and you can press the download button here to download your products from Shopify or download your customers from Shopify into Deer. If I do that, you'll see that we get the option for an image download here, and it's just gonna start this and do a very uh, smooth process of downloading any listed products. You can see we then have 15 on there currently. And once this is done, we'll see that those products then exist within Deer. So this is us pulling products from Shopify into Deer. If you're setting up uh, your Deer account for the first time and you don't have all your products currently in there, this is a good way to get them into your actual Deer account, um, because obviously all of the information should be correct from Shopify. Alternatively, so you can see all of these are now listed because we've pulled them into Deer, and that would then create the product in Deer as well. But we can do it the opposite way around, where we click into a product that exists in Deer, we can upload it to Shopify with a set one of its price tiers, so if we want everyone on Shopify to pay the retail price, we would select that. Um, these are all zero value for this product, but there would be a value there. We can specify a location to list this into and whether you want to allow back order for this product, and then you can list it on Shopify by pressing the button here. This one has zero price, so it's not going to let me list it. Let me just see if one of these doesn't. This is the issue of a test account. Bear with me for two seconds. <laughs> None of these products have any prices, but um, give me two seconds to go find one of these off uh, screen. Okay, sorry about that. I've just gone and landed a price against this product now, so we can see that it has £13 against it. It then has a back order enabled against it. So we can now list this on Shopify and you'll see that it's now creating or updating a product in Shopify. If this SKU matched the current SKU within Shopify, the two would be linked together instead of it creating a new product. We can then see here, we have a few options up here at the bottom. We can unlink the two so that stock and sales will no longer be linked. We can remove this from Shopify or we can update it on Shopify. So updating just means if we go into Deer now and change any of the settings against this product, we can then use choose to manually sync that across those Shopify's. Um, we're happy with that for now, though, so we'll just save that as is. And that's just how we list a new product from there to Shopify, if that's how we want to do things going forwards, um, and how to manage it. A very similar method we can do here is we can do bulk listing, which is just the same process, but in bulk, where we can list a whole category or brand of products at once. So one way I like to do this, I like to say, if you go against every product, for example, this product here, and we want to just use a tag of Shopify, for example. Um, so if I go into the tags here and I just add something called Shopify and press enter, it will then give it the Shopify tag. And from here, we can then go into our listings and we can list by tag. We can then choose to list by the tag Shopify. Um, I'm just gonna have to refresh the page quickly because I just added that. Um, back to our bulk listing. Hmm. Hmm. That should be appearing. Um, I'm not sure why it isn't, but just in case, I'll just show you with a category, for example. We can click like the American pool here, and you'll see that we have three products with the category American pool. Um, from here, we can then press the list button. Um, and a price tier. Um, so we do need to specify a price tier against this. One second. Oh, it's here. So we specify a price tier here. We can then list these at that price tier. That's then going to upload them all to our Shopify, similarly to how we did the one product at a time. And if we then to refresh this, we can see that they start be, uh, getting listed like so. I've just skipped that um, because I refreshed too soon and I only listed the one product there, but that is what, how it works in essence. If I now load up Shopify, I can show you those products within Shopify to show you how they're pulled across. 
So here we can see our Agma book that we just uploaded. Um, we can see that it has zero in stock, which can be pulled from deer once again. We can see that it's got um, the type test, which is the category pulled across from deer. And we have all of our information below. So that's everything that's pulled across. Feel free to pause here and have a look at anything. Um, obviously, this is only a test product, so it's not going to be perfect. Um, one thing also to mention is that if you are trying to pull from Shopify to Deer, one important or two important factors are that the product needs to have an SKU and the product also needs to have a category against it. Providing it has those two things, it should pull across OK. The next step now then would be actually creating a sale. Um, so we can do that by um, going into our orders here, creating a new order, and then adding in the item of, let's just say, um, our Agma book that we just added to the account. We can then add the item to the order like so. We can collect payment. We can then mark that as paid. And then we can create the order. And we've now got a paid order in Shopify, which is what we require for it to pull across into Deer. From there, providing we don't have any more setup to do on the account, which may be stopping us because we'll need at least an account code in here. So we'll need to link to our bank. If I was to now save, oh wait, and we also need to re-add our Shopify customer. Providing we've now done this, we should be able to go into our orders. And we should be able to load orders manually from Shopify. Um, this is one way of doing it, is loading them manually. Alternatively, these will load on their own over time. You'll see that we're now processing the order that I just created or loading across the orders here. And that's pulled them then into this almost intermediary between actually being in Deer and in uh, Shopify. Once we're happy with these orders, or once again, it will do this automatically on its own every set period, we can press the process button here. And that's gonna push all of those as orders into Deer itself. Um, I'm not got my tax rules up correctly. Um, so let me just go back and set those up. So we'll just go back into our setup here. We'll go into our tax rules and we'll just need to add in a um, default tax rule here. So let's just say 20%, 20%, 20%. And then this one, what we can do is exempt. Once that's saved, we can then try reprocessing that. And you'll see that those orders have now gone in. If we then go to the log, we can see all the orders that have been created by the actual integration here. So if you ever want to check up any orders that have come through, you can see them here. And we can click into them using the link here. Then based on the rules we use to set this up, um, so in this instance I used the Shopify customer because we didn't provide any information because I was making a sample order. Um, we can see the order's been created, the lines have come through, and the price here will be dictated by Shopify. From there, um, depending on where you bring this to, so you might have an authorized invoice, you might have some of the fulfillment stages complete, you're just pr processing your order as usual. Um, and the one other thing I should mention is the reference number from the Shopify order. So the internal Shopify reference is going to pull through into your reference field here. So you can always reference back to that. From there, it's just business as usual, uh, usual in there. So I hope this video was helpful in helping you understand that full end-to-end -end process. That should be everything you need to know in terms of the Shopify integration. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Uh, and feel free to leave any comments or feedback in the comment, uh, feedback or comments in the comments, I guess. Um, and that'll be all for me for today, and I'm looking forward to making some more videos for you guys.